it's Sister Sonia B, and it's great to see you. We've got an awesome Bible study lined up for you today. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? <laughs> I love how not everyone cheered or responded in the same way. That's because you each have your own individuality. Individuality is discovering who you're meant to be so you can make a difference. Each person is one of a kind because God made us that way. Each of us is created in God's image. Each of us shows the world who God is in a different way. You'll see what I'm talking about when we get into the story. But before we get started, let's join our friends in praise and worship. Hello, Hello kids. kids! Are you ready? Are you ready? children in the whole world. Amen. Bye. Good morning. 
A scripture this week is coming from Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 to 13. Let's grab our Bible and let's begin the week. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with them and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Oh, hear this, Jesus said. It is not the healthy who need the doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire your mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call righteous, but sinners. This ends the reading of our scripture. Have a blessed day. Bye. Great job, praise and worship leaders. Today we're reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 9 through 13. And we're talking about the guy who wrote it. That's right, Matthew himself. Here he is. Everyone say hi, Matthew. Now, I don't think Matthew actually looked like a Sour Patch Kid, but he was a bit sour before he met Jesus. Everyone show me your best sour face. Yikes! Matthew was a tax collector for the Roman government, and Jewish people at that time did not like tax collectors. First of all, the tax collectors worked for the enemy, the Romans. And if that wasn't bad enough, sometimes tax collectors would take more money than they were supposed to and keep the extra for themselves. We're not sure if Matthew did that, but tax collectors often did. Regardless, Matthew was probably very used to seeing people make faces at him, just like you made. And it probably soured him right back. Why, here are some town's people now. We'll call them Mike and Ike. Boo, Matthew, you're a traitor to your own people. You're getting rich from our money. Go home. Oh, stop complaining. I know you don't like me, but you've got to pay your taxes anyway. And that means paying me. Yeah. <laughs> See what I mean? Matthew was probably a pretty sour kind of guy. But don't worry. This was just the beginning of his story. One day, when Matthew was sitting at the tax collector's booth, Jesus came to town. People had heard about Jesus. They had heard about his amazing teachings and the miracles he had performed. Jesus is coming to our town? Woohoo! I hope he talks to me! There must have been so much excitement and curiosity as to what Jesus would do. Let's open the Bible and see what happened next. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. Okay, let's get this straight. Jesus is the Son of God, so he definitely would have known all about Matthew's job as a tax collector. He knew he had gotten rich off of other people's money. Jesus knew the people hated Matthew, but Jesus didn't ignore Matthew. He didn't walk the other way. He didn't do this. Instead, Jesus went right up to Matthew and said, what? That's right. Follow me. He's talking to me, right? Jesus is talking to me? I, 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 I gotta go. Oh, that's not fair. Matthew got up and followed Jesus. He must have been just as shocked as the other people that Jesus would call out to him like that. I mean, Jesus knew everything that Matthew had ever thought or done, even the things he had done wrong. But apparently, Jesus could see something about Matthew that Matthew couldn't even see about himself. Jesus believed that even a sour guy like Matthew was valuable and important. Matthew was so excited that he invited Jesus and his friends to have dinner at his house, and they weren't the only guests. 
While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. You know what that means. More sour dinner guests coming right up. Matthew, wow, love your house, dude. This is so fun. Why, thank you. Of course, not everyone in town was excited about this little dinner party. The religious leaders, called the Pharisees, didn't think Jesus should hang out with such sour company. They asked Jesus' disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? The disciples didn't even have to answer their question because Jesus overheard and he answered himself. He said, Those who are healthy don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have not come to get those who think they are right with God to follow me. I have come to get sinners to follow me. You see, Jesus knew that the religious leaders thought they had it all together. They didn't think they needed Jesus and they didn't want to change. Instead, Jesus focused on people like Matthew, who were very aware that they needed help. The religious leaders didn't know what to say. They were whoppered. After that, Matthew became one of Jesus' 12 disciples. He followed Jesus everywhere, and he saw more amazing things that Jesus did than nearly anyone else. Near the end of his life, Matthew wrote down all the stories he had witnessed and gathered so that others could also know Jesus. That's why it's called the Book of Matthew, because he wrote it. And you know what? Being around Jesus changed Matthew. He was no longer a tax collector getting rich from other people's money. He wasn't sour anymore. He was filled with joy. And I've got joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Woo woo, down in my heart. Woo woo, down in my heart. And I've got joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Down in my heart to stay. Woo woo. When Jesus saw Matthew that day in the tax collector's booth, he didn't focus on all the sour things Matthew had done. He saw Matthew as valuable, as someone who needed his help and love. Jesus sees you that way too. He sees how valuable you are. He knows that you're made in the image of God. He loves you, and he wants you to follow him, just like he invited Matthew that day. When you know how much Jesus loves you, you can see that you're valuable too. Bottom line, knowing Jesus changes how you see yourself. Let's pray and ask God to help us see ourselves like he does. Dear Lord, Thank you for seeing us the way you do. Thank you for making us in your image and giving us our own unique and special individuality. Thank you for inviting us to follow you even though we aren't perfect. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross so we can be forgiven and free. Help us follow you with all of our hearts and believe that we're valuable because you made us that way. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. What an amazing story. I'm so glad that Matthew didn't have to be stuck being sour, and neither do we. When Jesus saw Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth, he didn't focus on the wrong things Matthew had done. He saw the amazing and wonderful person who God created. That's what he sees when he looks at you, too. Each of us has made our own mistakes and done things that are selfish, but Jesus died on the cross to pay the price for our sins. Just like Matthew, when we have a relationship with Jesus, we can be forgiven and set free. We can live in joy and love because we know how much Jesus loves us. Knowing Jesus changes how you see yourself. Remember that. Whenever I think of how Jesus forgives and changes me, it reminds me that I can trust God no matter what. Even if I'm having a hard time or feel like I'm not good enough, I can trust God and remember that he will always forgive me. I can choose to follow him and live his way every single day. I could talk about that all day, but I won't because our time is up. Until next time, bye-bye.